Today we'll be making mussels with chorizo. Scott, thank you for being here today. Awesome, I, I'm glad you guys are here. Thank you so much for coming by. As, as far as gluten-free goes, it um, doesn't have to be a scary uh, phrase. We, we've got lots of options, and this is one of my favorites. Um, when it comes to gluten-free, this, this one just falls right, right into place. So what we have are tamales bay mussels, We've got some Spanish chorizo that really enrich the dish and make it exciting and flavorful and uh, nobody has to worry about it being gluten free. It's just full of flavor and just fantastic. So if we want, if we want to get going, let's do it. We've got these fantastic Tamales Bay uh, mussels that are locally grown. And one, th one thing I want to mention to people, when you're using shellfish, first of all, always keep it cold. Um, secondly, when they're open, you want to squeeze them a little bit, and if they close, you know they're, they're, they're still alive. And this guy, you can see, is closing after he was quite wide open. Um, if they're cracked or damaged in any way, throw them away. Mm -hmm. They're not safe to eat. Yeah, they're not safe to eat. So anyway, and always keep them uh, on, on ice or very cold. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a little what we do here at the restaurant. And there's, there's many ways that, that you can alter, supplements, do whatever you want. But here, here's the base idea. So we start with a little olive oil. This is our basil infused restaurant olive oil. Mm -hmm. That's why it's green. Um, and we add, we add a little butter and you don't, you don't need to do this. You can, you can use either butter or olive oil or both. The reason that we like to use both Olive oil gives the uh, smoking point temperature, so you can heat the oil up really hot. The butter gives it the flavor. If you use just butter, you're not gonna be able to achieve the temp that you need. Um, and if you use just olive oil, that's fine, but you're not gonna get that richness that the butter provides. Okay? So we're gonna get this going. Secondly, we're gonna add a little chorizo. And this is our Spanish chorizo. This is a chorizo bilbao. Traditional Spanish chorizo. You could use turkey sausage. You could use chicken sausage. You could use soy riso. You could use uh, any anything that you like. But it really, really accents the flavor and it marries really well with with the um, brininess and the richness of the, of the mussels. And where is your chorizo coming from? It's coming from Spain. It's coming from Spain. So this is this is a traditional pork sausage, um, but you could also use you know most um, in California we're probably more used to using a a fresh chorizo like a Mexican chorizo which needs to be cooked. This is cured, so technically you don't need to cook this, but it's nice that we put a little crisp on it and it also flavors the oil. Beautiful. Yeah, it's really really nice. So before we get a little too brown there, we're going to add a little crushed garlic and just get, get a little color and flavor on that. And as soon as you smell the garlic, you're ready to go. That looks nice. Oh, you can definitely smell the garlic. Yes, I know. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, brown is good, black is not. So a little brown butter is fantastic. So we're gonna take our fresh uh, tamales bay oyster, uh, I'm sorry, mussels. Just put them all in at once. Okay. And you just wanna, you wanna coat those with, with the fat and just get them, get them going, get the flavor going. All right. And you're gonna you're gonna want let those sit, let them sit for a second, um, and just let them let them absorb a little bit of that flavor, a little bit of that oil, and a little bit of the heat. Obviously, um, what we add to it then is our house-made uh, tomato sauce. You could use any, you could use simple crushed tomatoes um, uh, with a little seasoning. And this is this is our house-made tomato sauce with a little oregano, a little thyme, carrot, onion, celery. So we just coat it like that, just to just to enhance the flavor a little bit. Are you making your tomato sauce fresh? Of course, yeah, we make everything here fresh. Oh, it's beautiful. Yes, it is, wow, it is. Well, wait, wait till you taste it. Um, so what we wanna do also, 
add a little, for, we need a little acid balance, so we're gonna add a little white wine, okay? And just a kiss of lemon juice or lime juice, if you like. And what, what that's going to do is the, um, the acid is going to balance out the richness of the chorizo and the mussels and the tomato sauce um, and the garlic. So we're going to bring that up to a fairly high simmer. And then in the restaurants, what we do, normally at home, you would have a lid for your pan. In the restaurants, what we do, cover like that. And we're going to sit and wait for about three minutes. There are thousands of toxins in most diets, and that's because, I don't know, we're dumping some uh, 60 million tons of, of chemicals onto poor planet Earth every day. A lot of it goes into agriculture. A lot of it has become pharmaceutical meds that are in our bodies. Toxins that we can deal with very quickly are gluten in our grains, opioid peptoids, uh, peptides, which are in, uh, uh, is a wheat germ uh, and wheat germ agglutinin, which is grain lectin, okay? So um, most of the grains are gonna have uh, 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 gluten. Um, almost all of them have opioids. That's what keeps us addicted pretty much to flour and cereal and grains. We, uh, we have a love affair with white flour on uh, planet Earth right now. If you walk into Starbucks or any coffee shop, almost everything you see is white flour, white flour, white flour. What is it about this substance? Well, we think now that it's the opioids that are in it that actually keep us addicted to this strange substance. Eating wheat causes large amounts of food to be excreted instead of digested. Well, evolutionarily that worked out, you see. For the, um, for the grasses, which is what um, cereals are. They're, wheat, they're, they're grasses. And the part that we eat is the seed of the grass, so we call them grass seeds. These are all, the, when, you, when you say uh, gluten-free, what we're really talking about is gliadin in wheat. We're really talking about hordain in barley, secolin in rye, rain in, in corn, kefirin in sorghum, and avenin in oats. Collectively, they are called um, uh, prolamines and, uh, they're, or proline content. Uh, buckwheat contains no gluten and can consequently be eaten by people with celiac disease or gluten allergies. Rice also contains no gluten. Rice, rice does, however, contain four toxins, but these toxins are nullified. In other words, they are, they are, their, their shape is changed in space. <coughs> as they are cooked. 83% of the adult population develops observable gut inflammation after eating gluten. That means that you take 100 people and you give them uh, gluten to eat and then you observe what has happened inside their intestines, 83 out of 100 will show that they have inflammation from what they have eaten. Now, most people on, uh, on Earth, other than rice-eating countries, are eating some of this all the time. It's causing a lot of problems. 30% make an anti-wheat gluten antibody in the intestines, and 11% make it in the systemic circulation, that means in your blood, but only 44% have what we call celiac. Now, just because you don't have celiac doesn't mean that you're not one of the 83 out of 100 that develops gut inflammation, observable gut inflammation, after they've consumed wheat. Something to think about. So tell me about that salt, the salt and the sweet. What's going on with that? It's pretty big right now in the restaurant business. That's yeah, and flavors. I mean, it's been it's been around forever, but uh, it's really hit uh, the um, the scene, um, especially in Marin County, with um, the people doing uh, salted ice creams and uh, mm -hmm. salted desserts and salt savory uh, crisp and cobblers and things like that. And I happen to do a couple of them. I do a butterscotch pot de creme, 
uh, with uh, Muldon sea salt, which is an English flake salt, and it just balances out very well with the butterscotch. And I also do a, this vanilla panna cotta with a black Hawaiian salt, which is a little smokier in flavor, a little more sulfury, and um, done with a salted caramel. Oh, that's very interesting. Salts are the rage. You know, you go out to uh, the store and you see, instead of people giving away uh, flowers as a hostess gift, they're suggesting that you give away a special type of salt. So uh, tell us a little bit about the salts. You sort of described the black salt, and I see you have some on a plate over here. I have a gray salt here, which is uh, used in a lot of Italian cooking and mm -hmm. Mediterranean cooking, especially for fish and meats. Um, I have um, a flake salt here, a fluid of salt, which is an all-around, I use it as a table salt, which is really nice. It's got a less uh, mineral ca um, character to it than, uh, say, an iodized salt that you would see in a salt shaker. Mm -hmm. um, I like the texture of it. It's a little crispy. And then this one here has, um, this is a, uh, a red sea salt from Hawaii, and it's very sharp. So it's more of a volcanic flavor. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. with a little bit of sulfur, did you tell me? Uh, this is more of the black salt, what we're talking the about. The black yeah. salt has more of the sulfur. Now yeah. this, what's the character of the this? That's a real sharp salt with uh, just a real taste of the sea. Mm -hmm. That's what I, you know, more of a real saltiness from the sea, which is, um, you know, a lot of sea salts, it's hard to describe, but it's very, I think it's on the... Uh, on the sharp side. So the salts that you brought with us today have natural flavor. Can you tell us a little bit about the salts that are infused with flavor? Yeah, I also use a salt, um, it's infused with truffles from uh, Piemonte. So it's a white truffle salt. They also have black truffle salts, they have lime salts, they have all sorts of different salts. But the, uh, the salt gives it an essence of a truffle that I use on, on my truffle dishes, such, such as my truffle pastas and my sauces, uh, such as my scallops and, mm -hmm. and whatever, some, some of my meats. And it really gives that finishing touch which makes the, the palate pop. Mm -hmm. as you taste that first initial taste and then it follows through later on. It's a oh, great balancing yeah. agent as well. Is that a higher note or a lower note are you finding? Because do you pick it up on the finish or the or the Both end? sides. On both sides. Both sides, which is that's what's great about it. It's like a fine wine. You know, the first initial um, you know, uh, tongue, the fruit on the tongue, and then the, and then the finish. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. And salt can also be a uh, a balancer as far as uh, if something's too bitter, you can actually reduce the bitterness mm -hmm. by adding salt, or if something's too sweet, vice versa. By adding a little bit of salt, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. The the counterbalance of the two, sweet and salt, is really terrific.